It says rotate your phone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first official uh, NIPEN live video with me. My segment today is called S'mores with Smalls. Um, I'm going to teach you how to build a fire. So for those of you who have not been here before, we are at the waterfront at Camp Tree Foil. We actually have a gorgeous day, so I'm super excited. Um, so yeah, let's get this thing started. Um, so we're going to talk about three different types of fires. We're going to talk about an A-frame, a teepee, and a log cabin. We're actually going to light the A-frame. Um, but I'm just going to show you the other ones and what they're used for. Um, we use our A-frame when we're here at camp cooking because it's the easiest, and I'll show you that when we start to build it. First things first, we're going to talk about safety. Safety is very super important when you're around fire um, because, you know, something could go wrong and it couldn't be, you know, it's never good with fire. So we want to make sure that we talk about safety first. A couple quick rules. You want to make sure that when you are establishing a fire that you are in um, a fire pit or a designated area. So for those of us at camp, obviously we have some, you know, nice fire pits. Some people they have in their backyards have rocks around them. Make sure that it's dug down deep so that you're not, uh, you know, around anything that could catch fire, like, um, you know, tree stumps and things like that. Um, so that if, you know, a piece of ash were to get up and start start going, um, it could catch in something. That's how the wildfire starts. It's usually just something, you know, very small. So make sure that we're taking care of where, our area where we're doing it, okay? Next thing is you always want to make sure you have a fire bucket, that a water bucket that has water in it, okay? Um, any small fire could get out of control very quickly with the wind um, or anything. So you want to make sure you always have that water bucket easily accessible. So mine is right next to the pit. So if this were to get out of control, I have it very, you know, right, ready and handy, okay? Um, make sure that our hair is tied back. You never, you never want to lean over a pit and have your hair, um, you know, over it. It could go up very quickly. Um, make sure that if you're wearing anything baggy, like my sweatshirt, I'm going to end up pulling up my sleeves um, and strings as well. Okay, you want to make sure that those are back um, and that we're not, you know, leaning um, so that anything can catch fire. When you are starting your fire, you want to make sure that we use what we call our fire knee. Okay, so we're going to get down on one knee. Reason for that is that it makes me sturdy. Uh, I'm not standing up and leaning over in case I were to lose my footing, I would fall in. Uh, make sure you're on your knee. You can control the things around you as you're putting things in the pit like your wood, okay? <clears throat> what we always do here at camp is we always have the girls go on a, a wood hike to make sure. Like if we're going to cook dinner or cook a meal, we always make sure that we go out usually the day before or earlier in the day to collect what we need. Especially, you want to watch the forecast too because there's nothing worse than trying to start a fire with, you know, with um, w wet wood. So... We have here, I have it all out in the different types, which I'll talk about. So the smaller one over here is called Tinder. Tinder is smaller than your pinky. So if you hold your pinky up, this should be smaller than your pinky. So this is what we call the small stuff. So Tinder is our small stuff. Our kindling is in the middle. And this is what we use, um, you know, to kind of keep the fire going. This is usually bigger than your pinky, but smaller than your wrist, okay? And then we have what we call fuel, that's the big stuff. This is bigger than your wrist. So this is the stuff that's really gonna keep your fire going. But we always start with the small stuff first. So this is the big stuff. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to show you the three different types. We're gonna end with the A-frame because that's what I'm actually gonna light, okay? First one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to build a teepee. The teepee is used, um, you know, kind of just to keep people warm. Um, we don't use it for cooking because I'll show you later, the A-frame is very nice and flat. The TP is kind of cool. It is what it sounds like. Um, so you're just going to take and place these in here. And you're always going to, no matter what fire you're starting, you're going to need the small stuff underneath. So in this situation, I would have built my tinder underneath like this down here, obviously with some small kindling. Um, and we're just going to continue to build this into a TP. Hard to get it to stay when it's we're not lighting it for real reasons, but just like it sounds, and you're just going to continue to build around it till it's closed. You want to make sure you leave it some air. Um, you know, you it's not going to light and keep continue to go if it's there's no air in there. But this is what a teepee looks like, just like it <laughs> like it sounds like. Um, that is a teepee. I will show you the log cabin next. That's also exactly what it sounds like. Same thing. You want to keep your small stuff um, in the middle. And the log cabin is built with mostly fuel pieces once you have your fire established and going. Okay. 
and take your four, doesn't need to be four actually, however many pieces of fuel you'd like. Put two down, we're gonna go two across. Remember, with the log cabin, there's space in the middle for that stuff that you've built in there to light up and then you're gonna cross it, okay? And you can go however many high as you'd like, depending on your space, obviously, and what you need. Then it goes like that. And that is your log cabin, just like it says. Right? And I am going to light and start an A-frame. Like I said before, the A-frame is what we use here at camp because it's flat. The, the thing about the A-frame is that you need to make sure you figure out what way the wind is going. Reasoning for that is because you want the top of your A to catch the way that the wind is going to keep it fueling, okay? So in this instance, the wind is coming across us this way, going west, if you will. Um, but there's not too much wind, so we should be okay. Um, so with the A, you want to take your, your triangle first. You do not put the top part of the A on. You don't cross the A until your bottom and your small stuff is burning, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'll just keep the A down and we're gonna build, we're gonna take our tinder. So tinder can be anything. Like I said, some small pine um, needles are good. You never wanna put a lot of leaves in there. The reasoning for that is it'll smoke a lot um, and it will really kind of extinguish what you already have, okay? For those of you, my tree huggers out there, um, in my team, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, birch bark is great. So birch trees, for those of you that don't know trees a lot, they're the trees that have the white bark around them. Um, birch bark is really good. It's usually nice and dry. Um, and I have some over here that I can show you as well. <clears throat> it's good if you put it right up in a ball. Um, this is birch bark. So that's usually good too. So we're gonna try some of that in there. You don't wanna put a ton of stuff in here. Um, because like I said, the, the smaller the better. So I am going to actually try to do a one match. We haven't done this in a long time. Hopefully we have good luck. If you're using matches, make sure you're always striking away. Okay, make sure that you have no one around you in your circumference um, and that it's nice and safe. So you're always gonna strike away. I'm gonna strike away and see Might take me a few. Got some wind. You have to be really patient with matches. Sometimes you got to get it in the right spot. See the wind's ripping a little bit, so we'll put some more small stuff on there before we lose it. And then when we get it built up a little bit, I will add some kindling. One thing I forgot to mention when I first started to light the fire, before you at home start a fire in your backyard, you want to make sure that there are no burn bans in effect in your local area. Now this video is strictly for educational purposes as we are under a burn ban. Okay, so make sure if you are concerned that you check your local DEC website. Okay. Reasoning for the burn ban is because when we move into the spring and everything starts to dry out, um, you know, if this gets out of control quickly, we could easily, um, you know, set a lot of things on fire that are not supposed to be on fire. Okay, so make sure you check that out. Even if it is contained, like mine is contained right now, um, but it could get out of control easily. Okay, so make sure that we're being smart um, and using those resources wisely. Okay, so we're doing okay right now. I'm going to start to move to kindling, which is that bigger than my 
pinky. And like I said earlier, you don't want to do too much. You want to let it take its turn and burning. You don't want to smother it. But you want to be able to catch it. Nice and dry stuff, like I said. So make sure, you know, going on a hike with your your troop or your friends, family to collect whatever you need the night before, so that you have it. feels really good right now like I said the wind's ripping so it's nice and warm it's not too bad out actually for those of you that have not been outside today in the north country it's not too bad put some more small stuff under there when you are collecting your wood you want to make sure that we are leaving nature alone so never go up to a tree and pull the tree branch down Okay, you want to make sure that when you're looking for wood and your resources, that you're using stuff that is already down on the ground. Okay, reasoning for that is you don't want to pull a live tree and take a part of it. Okay, the reason that you hear a lot of popping when fires are happening because that's dry wood, and that means that it's usually dead. So if you're looking for trees that are down, most of them will snap like that. That means that tree is dead. Okay, never pull anything off of a live tree. Same thing with any other nature. You want to leave it alone. I always tell the girls, there's nothing worse than someone coming into your bedroom and ripping off your whole sheets or, you know, anything in your room because that's where you live. So you don't want to do that to our environment either. You want to make sure that you take, take care of it and protect it. Just add a little oxygen to it. You never, another safety tip, if you are the one that starts the fire, you never want to walk away from it, okay? If you have to leave for any reason, make sure that you give the responsibility to someone else so that someone is always attending the fire, okay? Like I said, this thing can get out of control really easily, especially with this wind. So make sure that someone is always paying attention that you have that water bucket close to you in case you need it. When these are dried out, these are just as good as birch bark. These pine needles, I'm not going to put this one here because it's still alive. It's just going to smoke. Um, but those are really good um, fire starters. Let this burn a little bit more and then I will add the top part of the egg. If anybody's on that has a camp song request, I can sing it for you while we wait for this. I probably just opened up a can of worms. It's okay. I love to sing camp songs. For those of you um, that would like an activity to do while you're home, um, a good fire starting uh, exercise or activity, exercise, that's not the word I wanted to use, sorry. Um, activity is if you have old egg crates, you can keep them, take dryer lint and pop it right in the hole. You can also take, um, you know, small pieces of sawdust or anything and put it in there with the lint as well or just without any lint. And you can melt wax and then just pour it over it. Let it settle for a little bit and then when you're ready, you need to start a fire it's going to rip part off like this and then it can go right in and these start they're great especially if you're you know you're it's wet out and the fire pit's wet and things like that um you can pop these right in you know light a match and these start great so um that's a good activity if you want something to do while you're um home in this wonderful time 
daisy on my toe or boom chicka boom oh there is a daisy on my toe it is not real it does not grow it's just a tat to of a flower so i look neat taking the shower it's on the second toe of my left foot a standing flower it has no root because that wouldn't look good pretty daisy on my toe my right foot loves my left foot so that one was one of my favorites boom chicka boom okay that one could go on forever i said a boom chicka boom i'm just imagining all the girls over here to my left in the amphitheater i said a boom chicka boom i said a boom a chicka rock a chicka rock a chicka boom uh-huh oh yeah one more time what's my favorite let's do hmm race car style I said a room shift of room. I said a room shift of room. I said a room a shift a grind a shift a grind a shift of room. Uh huh. Oh yeah. No more times because I don't know if people are repeating me. <laughs> All right, we are almost there for this top part. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed that this was a one match. I did good. That was like my biggest concern. All right, so when you're ready, and this is good to go, you're then gonna place, you're gonna cross your A. So your top of your A is gonna go in here. <clears throat> and like I was saying earlier, for cooking purposes, this is the best to use because it's flat. So if you need to put a grate over it, like at this fire pit, we have a grate. So this could easily slide out and we could cook on it because it's nice and flat. If you had a teepee um, or a log cabin, it may not do um, the best for those things. So you could put a grate on it, you could put your pots and pans here, um, other things that you know that you would that you would use. So um, it did pretty good, I'm impressed. Like I said, the biggest thing is you wanna make sure that you have that small stuff burning before you put the big stuff on. Um, there's nothing worse than you know having everything ready and you don't have your small stuff going. Any fire, you're always gonna have to feed the small stuff anyway. Um, so make sure that you're watching from the back. So on this side, I'm watching from the back to make sure that, you know, if we need to make, put stuff in that we can, okay? This log has caught, but it's not gonna catch unless there's stuff underneath it. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that small stuff underneath it and feed it if we need to. Um, but yes, that is all of the types of uh, fire building that we use here at camp. I'm sure there are other ones. Some people just pour some stuff on there and light it. Um, but make sure that you're being smart about what you're using, um, you know, when you're cooking and everything. So I think that's it for now. Um, I will show you how to put it out. I'll just burn for a couple minutes. Anybody have any other song requests in there? Oh, uh, the moose song. The moose? Give me one. Because it can't be uh, s'mores, small, s'mores without smalls if I don't cook a s'more, right? Okay, so the moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. Say way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh. Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Say way oh, way oh. Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. Way oh, way oh. Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. He drank his juice with care. But got some on his hair. He drank his juice with care. But he spilt some on his hair. Say way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Now he's a sticky moose. But he's a moose. Filled with juice. On the loose.
That one's one of my favorites. Whoever requested it, thank you. Okay, marshmallow's almost done. Making sure it's golden brown. Once this is complete, I will show you how to properly put the fire out. Okay. <clears throat> marshmallow good. We'll get back to that after. Okay. Putting the fire out. Also another key step, especially if you're at camp here with us, um, or you need to use the fire pit f the following morning or later in the day. Okay. Um, you never want to just douse the fire with water because if you have to use the fire pit later, that's going to be sopping wet. Um, there's nothing worse, like I said, than trying to start a fire when everything is soaked. Okay. So we're basically just going to undo it um, backwards. So you want to make sure what we're going to do first is we'll bring our water bucket over. Bring it up. And we're just going to take, we're going to like spritz it. Okay. Grab it. We're just going to put this out like this. And then what we're gonna do is, when it's cool, don't do this right away. When it's cooled down, you're gonna take your big pieces, your fuel off of there, okay? Cause obviously the fuel is what is, you know, the bigger stuff that's keeping it going. Um, usually we use a rake or a shovel um, to, to move the big stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the big stuff off, set it to the side, away from it, and you're just gonna kinda take the fire apart. Okay, so take the big stuff, um, take it off and then just continue to um, spritz it. Just pick it up and just kind of flick your hands like this. If anybody's wondering, yes, the lake is cold because this is lake water. <clears throat> spritz it. Then we can, I'm just going to use a bigger piece like this. Kind of spread it out a little bit. Spreading it out is the biggest, biggest um, important thing. Because once it's spread out, you know, it has nothing to catch to each other. So you want to make sure that it's all spread out. We'll spritz it a little more. Usually putting out a fire at night is the easiest because you can see the coals that are hot or the embers, if you will. Um, then you know if it's still hot or burning. You want to make sure the, that your, your big pieces of the fuel are out because those are the ones that will burn the longest if they are not put out. And on a day like this, like I said earlier, you want to make sure that it's fully out because if the wind Touches it, it could easily get out of control. Can't stress that enough. And that looks good. On the next segment of smalls with uh, s'mores with smalls, I will teach you how to clean up your fire pit, um, as well as um, make a nice s'more stick with a jackknife. So thank you all for joining me. Um, please make sure that you stay tuned to this page. We have a lot of fun and exciting things happening. Um, from all of the teams. So we have some outdoor stuff, some um, STEM, some get moving activities. So make sure you keep your eye on this page because we have a lot of fun, exciting things to share with you all. Thank you for joining me.